This is Sarah Connelly's video blog series, helping you accelerate your collective and personal transformation with systemic intelligence. Family systems are the first system that we are consciously aware of that we belong to. And in fact, initially, we're not consciously aware <laughs> we're part of the system. But uh, yeah, so that's the first system um, that we identify with as a system. Um, so if we look at organisational systems, they're very different to family systems, although the same systemic principles are at play, but they express themselves very differently. So for instance, if we take the family system, you cannot not belong to a family system. Um, even if you're disowned or disinherited at a systemic level, you still belong to your family system. In an organisational system, you belong for the period which you have value to exchange with the system. So whilst it makes sense for you to be part of the system. Um, if we look at um, one of the principles called orders, in a family system, the orders are clear. Uh, you know, parents are in the first position, children are in the second, third and fourth, depending on which number of child you are. And those orders need to be respected and, and followed uh, in a family system for it to be healthy and functioning. In an organisational system, the orders actually can be quite fluid. You can have orders that relate to the history or longevity of the organisation, but you have different orders which relate to who's responsible for the system. And then you can have different orders again, depending on competence and the issue. So in organisations, you have fluid orders. Um, families, you don't have fluid orders. They're, they're, they're set. Um, and then the other element that's at play is the give and take. In the family system, the give and take, um, the parents always give more uh, than the children. Um, so it's the flow of love. Um, and, you know, if there's a good exchange, then when the children generate the family, they will generate the lion's share of love to the children. And so you've got this exchange, slightly out of exchange, but it balances out across the system. In an organisational system, it's different. There's an explicit contract of exchange, but there's also background exchange that needs to happen in the system. Um, otherwise, you get sorts of things like people feeling disempowered or people feeling entitled. And these are all signs of um, the give and take, the exchange, um, you know, getting out of out of balance but the nature of the exchange changes because for instance if you're new to an organization you take more than you give if you're long term in an organization you give more than you take um, so the the dynamics um, uh, unfold quite differently in organizations as they should and this distinction is really important um, because the origins of this work came from the family systems therapy field, which was developed in the 1940s and 50s, where it was really understanding that often children have symptoms which are actually more a function of the dynamics between the parents. And it's like the child's trying to solve the problem on the parent's behalf. Um, and we see this in organisational life where it gets far more complex and far more sophisticated, but that um, people can be taken in service of the system. And so their actions are actually trying to restore order in a system that's disordered somewhere else. Um, and of course, you can imagine in a family that's quite contained in an organisation with all of the different people you know you might have thousands of different dynamics at play um, so there's a um, and you know they happen on so many different different levels and this is really important because if you're working in the organizational work you really need to understand uh, systemic principles as they apply to organizations is very different although there is an echo and there is a similarity to what applies in family systems. And so uh, when we train practitioners, it's really to understand how all of this applies in an organisational context. And one of the things that's very important about that is that um, you have um, a high regard um, and, a, and a heart for the population that you're working with. You know, if you, you cannot afford any judgments or any sort of pejorative opinions um, 
when you're doing this work, you can have them in your life, but when you're doing this work, you actually need to be attuning to the system and the system's wisdom, which means actually you can't afford <laughs> the luxury of, of having judgments um, uh, about what you see because in systemic work, the system is trying to communicate something. Um, so that needs to take primacy over any sorts of judgments or opinions that you that you have um, so that you can be of service to the organisation and its flow of life because that's really what you're trying to do is set up the organisational system according to healthy systemic principles which allow the life force and the energy to flow through the system in a way that produces thriving for everybody involved in the system. To avoid the trap of confusing the different dynamics between family and organisational systems, contact Sarah through ea at sarahconnelly.com. <laughs>